Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another battle to the death for you. This is going to be a good one. Benchmade Bug Out versus the Spider Co. Para 3 Lightweight. I know a lot of us were excited to see these two side by side since the Para 3 Lightweight was announced, what, two, three months ago, something like that. Both very lightweight knives, uh, both about the same size as you can see here, uh, both aimed at the same sort of purpose, and uh, they, they were just destined to be compared to each other. Uh, both both knives that I think would be very important for their respective companies. Uh, the Bug Out was, I don't know if a surprise hit, but it's been a huge hit for Benchmade. It's, it's probably their number one seller. I've heard anecdotally from people who aren't supposed to tell me that it is, but we'll, we'll see. I know from a lot of major retailers, it's their number one Benchmade they sell. And the Pair 3 Lightweight is uh, in a new a new direction a bit for Spyderco. It is a lightweight version of the Para 3, but it's the first knife they've done with these FRN handles and a compression lock. And normally their their FRN stuff is our back locks. This is a compression lock, which that is super cool. And uh, there are more coming already. They've already announced a Sage 5 lightweight, which you'll probably see in a comparison against one of these, or both of these, <laughs> whenever it comes out. Um, you gotta believe a PM2 lightweight's coming. Uh, it's it's very exciting that they do that. I mean, they've done a Manix 2 lightweight, several versions of that with the ball bearing lock, but yeah, this is the first compression lock uh, FRN, and I, th I think it's going to be a giant hit. The Para 3 is a big hit. I can see why this is the first one they did in it. All right, let's explain how this works, and then we'll talk about each knife individually a little bit. We have uh, seven categories I do for these, and I score one in each. Each, uh, each one wins a point as that goes on, and then at the end, we pick a winner. We have uh, design and aesthetics, quality, blade, ergonomics, carry, deployment, and value. Yes, seven. And then we'll pick a, a winner at the end. I will say, please watch this whole one. I know a lot of you guys skip around on these or just skip to the conclusion. The conclusion is going to be very complicated. There is a winner by the score, but there's a lot of caveats and a lot I discuss in this. This is probably going to be a pretty long video, but if you are interested in these two knives, it is worth actually watching the whole thing. This isn't um, isn't my average comparison video. Uh, I realized as I tried to start making notes and recording this, uh, I have a lot more thoughts about these two than I usually do. But let's talk about each knife individually for a moment, give some specs, and then we will uh, we'll get going. Uh, first up, the bug out. We have a price of 129 US dollars, or I'm sorry, 119 US dollars, I almost misspoke on that. And as I said, one of the most popular knives, uh, S30V steel, Grivery handles is what they uh, what they call them. Uh, that's their word for fancy plastic. Uh, almost linerless. The, the liners only come down to about here. Super lightweight. Uh, as it, it's like an under well under two ounces. We'll get to that in just a second. I do all the full specs, but shockingly big hit for Benchmade. Uh, it comes in different versions. This is, as I said, the $119 standard blue version. There is also a green with a coated blade. Either of those uh, come in uh, half serrated blades, or if you want to be really silly, you can spend $750 on a Dama Steel version with G10 handles that has like the glow and the dark stuff on it. It's it's crazy expensive, but I have held one, and they are also pretty crazy cool. Not my not my bag, but if you just really love this design, you can spend stupid money on one. Benchmade will allow you to do that. Uh, as far as specs go, we have an overall length of just under seven and a half inches, blade length of three and a quarter inches, blade thickness very thin and slicey, 0 0.09 inches, handle thickness of 0 0.2 inches, and a weight of just 1.85 ounces. So it is an extremely lightweight knife. Next up, the Para 3, as I said, lightweight version of the Para 3, which is the smaller version of the PM2. So it's a version of a version of a version, uh, but it's it's a pretty cool one. $91, pretty reasonable price, BD1 and steel, which is kind of a new steel for spider cobies. I guess they did use it on the UK PK when I did my first impression of this. I forgot about that. Very popular steel for kitchen knives, for hiring kitchen knives and things. So it, it's a really good steel. It's not your normal BD1. It's got nitrogen added to it because that's what blades crave. And it's a, it's a very good, very good steel. Um... I've been impressed with it so far. I've only had this for less than a week, uh, but it's it's I've tried to put it through as much hell as I could in that time, and it's held up very well. 
uh, you have uh, the wire clip instead of the Achilles heel of the original pair of three. I don't normally bring out other knives when I do these, but I think it's worthy in this. So you can see this is my regular pair of three. It has a deep carry pocket clip, which is a, an, a required purchase because if not, this is how much of your knife is sticking up because of, in my opinion, a very poorly thought out location of a lanyard hole. And a knife only this long, that's just silly. Uh, but on this, you have a nice wire clip, deep carry wire clip. They move the lanyard hole, because, you know, let's be honest, it's only about 10% of people, I think, that really care about lanyards, if that. And they kind of just totally messed up that the whole pocket clip placement just to put a big, giant lanyard hole on it. The, I much prefer this design change. As far as specs, as I said, price $91, overall length 7 and a quarter inches, blade length of 3 inches, blade thickness much thicker than the bug out, uh, 0 0.14 inches. We will talk more about that later, you can bet. Handle thickness, also a little bit thicker, 0 0.46, and a weight a bit heavier, 2.4 ounces. Now, let's get on to those scorable categories, and let's get going. All right, first up, design and aesthetics. This is the most subjective category, but I don't think it's even close on this. The bug out is a much better looking knife. Uh, I've never liked the looks of the pair of three. I honestly don't know that many people who do. There's a lot of great redeeming qualities about the pair of three, but the way they look open or closed, you know, ain't one of them. It is a shrunken down version of the PM2 and it looks like that. It looks like it was just eh, like just squished in a copier. It's very fat, and it's just kind of awkward dimensions, where the bug out just looks like a good, simple knife design. And more often than not, simple is good. And it looks... It, the, the bug out's a really nice-looking knife. The pair of three, in all of its forms, in my, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of a lot of people, just isn't. It just isn't a pretty thing. Nothing wrong with that, but it's just not super pretty. Quality-wise, this is something I went back and forth on a lot. Uh, this, it's really hard to explain, and I'm going to try to. Uh, I'm calling it a tie. I'll just get that out of the way. But the reason why, the bug out feels nicer, I guess, the, the grivery versus the FRN. FRN's what, you know, spider co or fancy plastic. Um, But it just, the the pair of three just feels feels more solid. It just feels like a much more solid knife. Um, and before anybody puts in the comments, keep watching. Somebody's going to say, but one of the stop pins only sits in the FRN. And one side of the stop pin only sits in the FRN. We'll get into more on that later. Hold your, keep your powder dry. We'll get into that later. Um, it does just feel like a much more solidly built knife. And in a lot of ways, in a way, I'm trying to think, I was trying to think of the word to describe this, just with the more contoured, I mean, these are contoured also, but I don't know, just those contoured edges and stuff, it just, I don't know, this feels like more, feels more complete, if that makes sense. Uh, it just feels more solid and more complete than the bug out is, but the bug out feels more nicely finished, so that's why I'm, I'm going to call it a tie. As far as blade centering, all that stuff, they both came out perfect. They're both fine. Uh, I, I don't have anything to complain about there. So I have to call quality a tie. I really couldn't decide on that one. Uh, blade. Uh, this was absolutely not a tie. I, I I have faith in the BD one end steel. I've heard good things from guys who've done a lot of cut testing with kitchen knives that use it and stuff, and they say it's amazing. Uh, and the S30V, I, I, I don't think edge retention and stuff, they're going to be that far off. I think maybe the S30V may still be a bit better, but but that remains to be seen. Um, but the reason why I'm giving the win to the Benchmade is not because of the steel choice. This is just a thinner, slicier blade. Uh, it's thinner behind the edge. It's thinner blade stock. And uh, even though this is a full flat grind, this is almost a full flat grind. It's damn close. But the blade stock is so much thinner. It's just a better slicer. You get more cutting edge because there's no finger choil, and the blade is just a little bit longer anyway. It's much slicier, and these are lightweight knives. Uh, I don't think they're going to be pressed into super hard duty. They shouldn't be. Um, and even though I think they both can probably stand up to it okay, uh, I think sliciness matters more in these kind of knives than anything else. And this, this blade stock of just 0 0.14 inches is... I get this is just a lightweight version of a knife that already existed, so I get why that's the blade stock they chose. Um, but, yeah, I think... 
like when they do the Sage Sage Five Lightweight, that's gonna have a thinner blade, and you know maybe that'll be. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, I just I just think that this thin blade stock is much more appropriate, and probably why this weighs half an ounce less because it's got so much thinner blade stock. So. I think that's a more appropriate choice for this kind of knife. And it's also just that nice, simple drop point shape. I have nothing against the leaf shape, but nice, simple drop points, very nice. Blade, pretty easy win for me, in my opinion, to the bug out. Ergonomics. Uh, this one wasn't terribly close either. The uh, bug out is good. It's fine. It's got a little bit of jumping up here. No hot spots or anything like that. The griveries, you know, plenty grippy enough. All that stuff. Um, it's good. It's good. Uh, the ergonomics on the pair of three are fantastic on the lightweight. They're better than the regular pair of three. Uh, I like being able to choke up. That's just something that I like, but I can still fit all four fingers without choking up. Uh, these nice contours on the edges of the handles just fit great. They're super comfortable. I love the jimping on this. It's not, not overly done. It's not uncomfortable, but man, you're locked in on this sucker. You ain't going nowhere. And it's, uh, it's just, Ergonomically, it's just excellent. Like I said, better, better than the original. And this so uh, wire clip, it, it does it does touch your palm, but it's a wire clip. So when you squeeze, it just kind of deflect, you know deflects out of the way. It doesn't create any hot spots or anything. Ergonomically, this is, I mean, the bug out's fine, but this is just great. So easy win ergonomics to the pair of three. As far as carry goes, we'll bring out ye old Wranglers. I mean, you could, but you can kind of guess. When you look at the two when they're closed, um, yeah, this is this is kind of tall. Is it in actual practice a big deal? No, no, not at all. I I don't ever like I've been carrying this the last few days, and I I, I think it's a great knife to carry. It's it's easy to forget that it's there. You can completely get your hand past it. All that stuff, you know, that you'd want. It's it's completely fine. That you're not hitting any sharp things or nothing like that it's not a pocket dominator or anything like that i don't want to make it out like that it's a great knife to carry it's a, a very nice knife to carry but the bug out is just on a whole other level i mean it it's much shorter also has a deep carry clip also slides in and out of the pocket very easy but you just you don't even know it's there it's half an ounce lighter it's a thinner handle and it's easier to get your hand past so slam dunk carry for the bug out but it this is the pair of three lightweight still great so it's yeah both of these in their categories it's varying degrees of awesome that we're talking about here but you know that's the way it is definite win for the bug out in that category now deployment uh this one is if this if this sentence makes any sense um is kind of an easy tie uh which one do you like? Do you like compression lock? Do you like do you like the the axis lock? They're both fun. They're both fun to play with. You know, you can do all those things. They're both completely drop shut once they've been broken in or adjusted. They're you can both, you know, you can flick them. All those things. It's it's just which lock do you like better? That's it. And and to explain that into more, uh, I think both of these have stuff that people complain about, and I think neither of them are going to be issues. So, on the axis lock, people complain about Omega Springs breaking, because um, there's a little, you know, coil spring that holds this in there, a little spiral spring. Um, I, I don't, I honestly, I've, I've had a lot of Benchmates, I've never had a problem with it. Uh, I know people do, I know, so I know it's a real thing, I'm not saying it isn't, but um, I've never had an issue with it. And the thing on the pair three lightweight people are losing their tiny little minds about is uh, that one side of the stop pin sits in the FRN. And, oh, that's going to wear, it's going to break. I, I, I beat this up pretty good the last few days, and I have no, no lock rock, no blade play, no nothing. And if you look between the two, if you look at the stop pin on the, uh, it, it's just, yeah, it's only a liner on one side, but it's a much thicker liner. And it's screwed in. It's not just the stop pin isn't just sitting in there. It is screwed in. So I, I don't know. I just I don't think I don't think it's gonna be an issue long term. And again, this is a lightweight knife. This isn't some big beastly beater thing. Uh, I I just don't think that that FR and stop pin thing's gonna be an issue. I, I'm gonna hold on to this for a long time. I have no problem no, no plan to get rid of it. I really like it. I will use and abuse it more. And if uh, if I'm wrong, I'll come back and say that I'm wrong. But I just 
I don't see it being an issue. I mean, I was out just whacking in a tree with it for a while and I couldn't, it didn't loosen up. I mean, no, it's not comparable to, you know, six months of hard use, but I just, I don't, I don't see that's what, you know, this is going to be. Also, people will say on the Para 3 Lightweight, there's only a bushing on one side and the other side runs on, runs on the FRN. Again, Spyderco does that with a lot of their knives. This is not the only one where they have the blade running on the FRN, and it's it's never been a problem, really. So some of their most popular knives do that. Um, and I I don't... I, I reserve the right to be proven wrong, but I don't think either of those things are going to be actual issues with this knife. So uh, I'm calling it a tie. And uh, spoiler at the end, it would not have mattered either way if I'd have chosen one of these either way. So... I'm calling it a tie. Value. Uh, value, I have to go to the pair of three. It's it's 30% cheaper. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And I said in quality, I called them a tie, and this is 30% cheaper. So, gotta gotta call it a tie there. I mean, gotta call it a win, I'm sorry, for the pair of three in that one. It's uh, it's 30 bucks. I mean, I, I do feel in some ways that the, the bug out is nicer, but I don't think it's 30% nicer. So, where does that leave us? Uh, Scoring-wise, 3-2 to two win for the bug out. And I think that's pretty fair uh, with two ties. But that said, I, I, could, I, I could totally see an argument for getting the pair of three and said, it's 30% cheaper. It won, that, won the value category, which is the most important category. It won the ergonomics, which is very important for a lot of people. But then, you know, the bug out won the blade, which these are knives that's also one of the most important categories. I could see an argument for either. Um, I definitely plan on keeping a hold of both of them. Um, I've had this bug out for uh, quite a while, but well over a year anyway. And the pair of three lightweights going nowhere. Um, yeah, scoring wise, win for the bug out, and I'm comfortable with saying that. But uh, for me personally, I, I, I like them both equally. In my mind, it's a tie, I think, for the average person. If I just had to flat-out recommend gun to my head one over the other, I'd probably say the bug out if you have the means to spend that much more money. If you don't, you can buy a pair of three layaway and be super happy with it uh, forever and ever and ever. Now, uh, I hold hold uh, I hold the right to redo this later when inevitably the pair of three layaway is going to come out in a million more versions. They have room, they've got 30 bucks worth of room to put some fancy pants steel on it and make a really cool one that would be way better than the bug out. So let's see. And then we're going to see how that, you know, lock system holds where that single pin holds up and all that stuff. Um, I, I can see them, they got 30 bucks to play with in a, in a couple months time. If, you know, this is the S110B Blurple version or something like that. Yeah, that we might have to do this again. We may be back here again is what I'm saying, but... I hope you guys have enjoyed this and enjoyed my my slightly or understood my slightly rambling conclusion. Uh, but both great knives. I can't not recommend either one of them. But I guess yeah, if if you're just if you're only gonna buy one, I I, I would probably go bug out. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.